Hi, everyone. Welcome. I am clearly having a mouse issue. Hold on just a second. It's not letting me progress. <laughs> okay. You know what? I'm wondering. <laughs> Joe, maybe you can make it go more. <laughs> it's not letting me hit the next button. Okay, I'm not gonna touch it and see if you can make it progress to the next one. <laughs> well, welcome everyone. <laughs> um, we're here to provide some entertainment for you this evening. Oh my goodness. Sorry about that, Joe. Um, well, you all got to see the theme for our a lot more learning um, professional learning this year is about building community through language proficiency. So if you want to see that again, let us know we'll wait for you again. Um, tonight, I am so happy to be here with you and welcome you to tonight's webinar where we are going to be addressing um, reflections and questions on engaging, supporting and assessing language learning in a post pandemic era. What I would like to do is before we actually start um, the webinar with Joe, I do want to go over just a few things with you just so that you guys will um, kind of know what to expect. Um, this is a webinar that's joint with Jodell and Avant More Learning, MORE standing for more learning opportunities reaching everyone. And um, you can still join if you know anyone who might want to join our webinar this evening, please feel free to share our bit.ly link. And we also want to encourage you to be engaged with the webinar tonight, either through our chat, or you can also post your thoughts, what you're learning or any questions you have using the hashtag AskJoDale. Okay. So just a few links for you. Don't worry about trying to jot all of these down. I'm gonna share them with you in the chat in just a few moments, but just want you to know that we have a lot of resources and materials and things that you can reference um, after the webinar. Be sure to follow along. Um, you can follow Avant More Learning on Twitter at the at more underscore learning underscore, or you can tag Joe Dell during the Twitter, um, the, the tweeting of the webinar at Joe Dale. And to answer a few questions you may have before we actually start, you will be eligible to get a certificate of attendance if you are joining us live this evening. Um, you will be receiving an email tomorrow that will have a link to a folder where all of the materials from tonight's webinar, a link to a certificate, a link to the chat, all the goodies will be in your folder that you guys will receive tomorrow, okay? So don't worry about that right now. You're also gonna get a copy of Joe's slides, which are a gold mine, let me tell you. So without further ado, I would like to introduce and welcome Joe Dale to tonight's webinar. We're so excited to be partnering with you on this, Joe. And I promise I am gonna let go of the control since clearly I'm not in control this evening. Um, but we're happy to have you. We're so excited to learn from you. Joe is joining us from the United Kingdom this evening. And he is he has so much experience and so much to share with us. So Joe, I'm turning it over to you. And I will see you guys back in just a little while when we check in with you to see what questions you have or what you guys are tweeting about. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Dawn. That was a, a, absolutely hilarious, that beginning. That's great. That's, that's the first time that's ever happened in a webinar. But anyway, it's all good. It's all good. So thank you ever so much um, officially for this opportunity. It's an absolute pleasure to be here um, uh, collaborating with 
um, of Upmore Learning. Uh, it's a real, it's a real privilege. It really is. So, um, as Dawn has said, uh, my name is Joe Dale. Um, it is now uh, twenty three thirty six in the evening in the UK. So I will try to keep my eyes open for the next hour. But we're going to have lots and lots of fun, and hopefully we're going to learn a lot together. Um, I've got the chat open uh, throughout the presentation. You're going to get the whole presentation as a PDF as well. Um, I'm now in control of the of the uh, presentation, which is lovely. So hopefully everything will go uh, okay. I've got my iPad here as well. So if you want to um, send me a message uh, via the hashtag Ask Joe Dale, as Dawn has said, or if you want to uh, tag me in a um, in a comment on Twitter, feel free to do so. Uh, so we're good to go. So a little bit of background about myself to start off with. Uh, I'm a former languages teacher. I taught French for 13 years, teaching secondary school level for three years or K-12, as you'd say in the States, and then 10 years at middle school level, uh, teaching nine to 13 year olds. And I live on the Isle of Wight, which is just south of uh, Southampton uh, in the UK on the South Shore. And uh, I've lived here for over 20 years. And uh, for the last 11 years or so, I've been a, an independent languages consultant. So normally, I uh, normally, as in before the pandemic, I would travel around the world. I've spoken um, at Actful, for example, as well as other conferences in the States um, in, uh, in recent years. Um, but since the start of the pandemic, I've been doing everything via webinars. And in fact, I've spoken at quite a few American conferences such as Flava, such as uh, Skult, such as IELTS and, and so on and so forth. So it's really lovely to be here and I really hope that you find the session useful. Okay, so what we've done is we've divided the session into three main areas, um, looking at uh, speaking, how you can promote speaking uh, in this uh, in the situation that we find ourselves in, in the moment, um, how you can look at assessment opportunities and, and also how you can engage students um, with uh, remote teaching or hybrid teaching or face-to-face -face teaching whatever whatever context you may find yourselves in so what we've done is um, I've uh, addressed quite a few of these different questions I'm going to be showing you some questions on the screen which are quite sort of common questions which are coming up all the time so hopefully um, they will resonate with you as I said I've got the uh, the chat open so feel free to put some comments in the chat as well and um, if there's something I can answer very quickly there and then I will do that um, straight away. Um, but we're also going to have some uh, Twitter chat breaks as well uh, throughout the presentation, whereby um, uh, we can we can cover any other questions that haven't been covered so far. OK, so let's make a start. Practicing speaking in a remote and blended learning environment. So here are, are a couple of questions which um, are sort of typical of the sorts of questions that have come up. As you can see, uh, it's saying, you know, could you give us some ideas to help students participate more in speaking activities during an online lesson? Some of my students are a bit shy, do not want to speak, they only want to type. How do you engage students in speaking practice in an online learning environment? So I'm sure lots of you can um, relate to this. And let's see what uh, are some of the answers which I am suggesting right now. So let me go on to the next slide. So um, back at the beginning of the pandemic, I wrote an article for the Modern Languages Teachers Lounge uh, Facebook group, which Linguascope uh, organized. I think it's not actually um, on Facebook anymore because uh, I couldn't find it the other day when I looked. But the article I've also copied into a Google Doc at the bottom of this slide. And, and don't forget, you're going to be getting all the uh, different slides as one PDF um, at the end of the presentation. So this is an article which I wrote, took me a couple of days to write, and it goes through uh, lots of different suggestions on how you can uh, do speaking homeworks, how you can uh, give audio feedback, and how you can use audio for exam revision, either if you're working in a Google environment, if you're working in a Microsoft environment, or you're just working in a general uh, environment whereby you're just using third party tools. So there's really something for everybody. And I've tried to share lots of ideas that I've gained over many years of experience of, of training teachers on the use of technology uh, for the teaching of languages. So you should find something there that you find useful. Uh, so being more specific about um, playing games as a way of encouraging students to uh, speak either in a face-to-face -face environment, a hybrid environment, or in a re remote environment, I'm a big fan of Jamboard, which if you haven't seen before, is um, a collaborative whiteboard. Um, you do have to have um, a Google account to use it, so it's designed to be used in a Google environment. But um, all the things you can do with Jamboard, you could use uh, more or less with the Microsoft whiteboard or certainly with Microsoft Class Notebook. 
Um, so it's not the tool doesn't matter. It's just what you're trying to do pedagogically speaking. So as you can see on the screen, um, what I've done here is I'm suggesting how you can play a game of battleships with two students um, or as a uh, as a whole class. Um, so what you would do is you would then copy that particular um, frame so that you had uh, two frames next to each other. But of course, one student shouldn't be looking at each, each other's frame, otherwise it won't work as it were. Um, and uh, in this one, we're practicing um, uh, some grammar. So we're looking at um, activities in French with uh, different um, uh, sporting uh, 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 leisure activities and sporting activities. And obviously the idea is that you um, cross off the battleship if you then find it on the screen. So you would take all the battleships on the screen there and then you would then put them onto um, the particular square and then you'd play a game of battleships to do it that way. If you do a search on Twitter um, for my name plus Jamboard, then you will find, I've tweeted this quite a few times, I've actually put together three different Jamboards which have 20 separate ideas on how you can use Jamboard in a language's um, context. So if you do a search for Joe Dale and Jamboard, then you will find um, that uh, that tweet with the three different Jamboards in there, which you can then have a look at and um, see some other ideas how you can use uh, Jamboard for playing games. But as I said, you could do the same thing using uh, Class Notebook. And again, if you do a search for uh, Battleships and uh, Class Notebook, then you will find examples of that. Here's another very, very simple idea doing noughts and crosses um, with the images here. I've just used the Google image search, which is part of Jamboard. So you just uh, click on the, uh, the image option, you click on Google image search, and then you can find um, all the images that you need. And then the idea is then you would then drag and drop the um, emojis onto the correct uh, image and have a, a, a either um, a pair work, um, Jamboard game with um, noughts and crosses, or you could do it as a whole class activity. And I got the um, emojis there, or the the crosses and the and the noughts from a website called emoji.co.uk, which um, is very, really nice for finding uh, useful emojis that you can then use. This um, particular Jamboard, this took me about three hours to put together. What I did was I asked uh, people within the MFL Twitterati, which if you haven't heard of is a community similar to LangChat um, in the UK, um, which has people from, um, from the UK as well as from Ireland. And the hashtag is used by language teachers from all over the world and has been for many years. And so what I did was I put together a Google Slides presentation and I asked people in the MFL Twitterati if they could post their Bitmoji onto that um, presentation. Um, uh, uh, two separate Bitmojis, one with their face and then one with the, uh, the full body Bitmoji and for this particular activity, what I did was I uh, took um, um, various uh, faces from the MFL Twitterati, dragged and dropped them across to my iPad, and then used Keynote to design these, these little uh, uh, stickers, as it were, to have a game of Guess Who with Jamboard. And again, you could do the same thing in Class Notebook, etc. cetera. So um, it took a lot of time to do that, but um, it's, uh, it's great fun, I think. And I've seen people tweeting about them actually using the uh, the... Uh, MFL Twitter RT Bitmoji Jamboard in class to do guess who, so why not? Okay, some other ideas around playing games uh, to encourage speaking is using Genially. I don't know if people are aware of, of Genially, but it's a really uh, amazing presentation tool which allows you to do things like games and escape rooms and, and so on and so forth. Uh, Marie Alliroux, who's a French native speaker in, uh, in the UK, who's uh, teaching in a prep school, uh, she is the, the queen of uh, Gina Lee, and she has a Facebook group, which is on the uh, screen right now, bottom left. And I think I'm right in saying it's got about 5,000 members, and it's only been going for a few months. So um, that's fantastic. I see we've got the question, is Gina Lee compliant with Google? My understanding is you can log into Gina Lee with a Google um, account or with a Microsoft account, so you'd be absolutely fine. Um, and what I would suggest is that you have a look at um, these two uh, Gina Lee webinars, which I hosted um, in collaboration with Gina Lee. And um, the first one, I think it's had about 3,000 views or something. So uh, many, many, many different views. And I think the second one also has had uh, many views as well. You can see the, the screenshot there from December of last year. It's already had 3,200 views. It's, pro it's probably had many more since then. And on my YouTube channel, which is uh, Joe Dale 100, which um, Dawn very kindly shared at the beginning. Um, you'll find there are other Gina Lee um, 
uh, YouTube clips there as well um, involving uh, Marie. And uh, in the second one, we had Julia Morris as well, who's a language teacher from the southwest of England um, as well. Uh, and she has produced um, a book around escape rooms as well. Uh, she's a languages teacher, but it's the escape room book is aimed at education in general. So I'd really encourage you to check out those two activities, to those two resources, if you're looking for ideas around encouraging speaking using uh, Genially. Deck Toys is another uh, free tool, which um, I know is very useful for uh, gamifying the languages classroom. It's not something which I personally use, but um, on the um, on the slide there, you've got a couple of different teachers. Um, you've got Esmeralda Salgado, uh, who is the head of languages at King's Ely School in, uh, in Cambridgeshire. You've also got uh, Katuska Sabel, uh, who's also written about the use of deck toys. So you've got three separate blog posts there. And you've also got a YouTube clip as well, which Esmeralda put together, which is a tutorial. It's about 30 minutes long on how to create a deck toys activity. So. Deck Toys is, in my opinion, quite complicated, but it does allow you to make games, um, which you can obviously use as a way of practicing speaking in the languages classroom. So another nice one to have a look at as well, but I wouldn't suggest doing that if you're a beginner to this sort of thing. This is the Deck Toys tutorial that I've just mentioned. So it's 30 minutes long. If you go to Esmeralda's uh, YouTube channel, you'll find that she has got lots and lots of really interesting uh, YouTube clips, lots of tutorials on using different edtech tools. Uh, her blog is also amazing, uh, which is MFL Craft, MFL as in modern foreign languages, mflcraft.blogspot.com. Um, it's an absolutely, absolutely wonderful blog. I'd really encourage you to read that. And also the other blog I'd really recommend is by Jane Bassnet. Bassnet is B-A-S-N-E-T-T -T, or Bassnet uh, J on Twitter. And she, uh, she has a blog which is called What Jane Learnt Next, what Jane Learnt Next .blogspot.com. Um, Jane, as um, is um, Esmeralda, uh, they're both heads of languages in their schools. Um, they're both in charge of uh, e-learning in their schools as well. They're the, 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 the lead for um, uh, e-learning in their schools. And um, they're both lovely people as well, which is the most important thing. But I would really encourage you to check out those two blogs. I would say that the they're the, some of the best blogs out there by languages teachers on the use of technology. There's also Sylvia Basto as well. Uh, Sylvia is S-I-L-V-I-A, Sylvia Basto, Basto is B-A-S-T-O-W. So those three blogs, um, you'd have lots and lots of um, ideas to, to check out. Okay, let's carry on. Uh, Jimena Lisitra is also an amazing uh, language teacher. She uh, is based in Madrid and she, um, is very active on Twitter. She uh, did a, a Tilt webinar for us. If you haven't heard of the Tilt webinar series, um, then since the start of the pandemic, uh, myself and my friend Helen Myers, who is the chair of the London branch of the Association for Language Learning, which is the equivalent of ACFIL uh, in the UK, we both came up with the idea of putting together a series of webinars. And we've done over 130 webinars since the start of the pandemic. So you can imagine that's a lot of work, but all are available absolutely for free. If you go to my YouTube channel, which I mentioned already, or you go to the AWL London website and click on the webinars um, section, then you'll be able to see the archives of all the different webinars that have happened. And we've had lots of people from the States as well that have taken part in the webinars, people like Catherine Ousselin, um, people like Carmen Scoggins and so on and so forth. So there's a, a real mix of people from literally all over the world. Now, the reason I'm showing you this Tilt webinar here is because uh, Jimena, she's done a couple of Tilt, webinar for, Tilt webinars for us. And in this one, she gave us an insight on how she's using deck toys in the languages classroom. So that's why I've included that there for you. Yeah. Okay. So some more questions. How can you promote communication with the target language in a large classroom setting, e.g. 30 students in a class? What are some successful ways you have found to get students to submit work through means other than the written form? Uh, is there a simple method where students can easily post their sound recordings into Google Classroom? Okay, so some nice juicy questions there. So um, I'm a big fan of audio. Anyone that knows, uh, knows me on Twitter or what have you, then you'll know that I'm a big fan of, um, uh, of audio of podcasting and um, audio feedback and multi a multimodal approach to 
conveying meaning, not always doing writing, but being able to use uh, audio recording tools to practice speaking and listening skills. And I'm a big fan of the tool on the left-hand side, which is called Quicker, which is Q-W-I-Q-R. Uh, if you click on the YouTube clip there, then you'll be able to see a demo. Uh, essentially, what Quicker allows you to do, it's, uh, well, it has two main features. The first feature is you can use it for recording individual recordings and attach them into a QR code. You can then take that QR code and you can put it into, say, an exercise book or on a display uh, and you get the students to record their audio uh, to describe, let's say, a picture or some text, or you can use it for audio feedback as a way of speeding up the process of giving, uh, of giving uh, feedback as an alternative to written feedback. The second way of using uh, Quicker is through what's called Quicker Conversations, which I particularly think is useful um, when we're in different contexts. So with Quicker Conversations, what you can do with that is you can record your audio as the teacher. You then share the link with the students via a QR code or via the chat, for example. And uh, you then get the students to click on the link and they can all record their audio and then they all appear in the one on the one uh, web page or in the same place. You can also turn on moderation as well. So it means that if you want, only you can hear the audio and the student recording the audio, but not everyone else in the class can hear that. Or you can... Um, have moderation turned on, but listen to the audio first to check that it's appropriate and what have you. And then you can click on approve if you want to. So, and by clicking on approve, it means everyone can then hear that audio. If you don't click on approve, it will, you're still, you can, it can still be submitted, but it just means that only you as the teacher can hear it. Uh, you can also lock the conversation at the end of the uh, recording, which means that um, no one else can then post to that, um, that, that link. And it's really, really handy and useful, I think. Uh, on the right hand side, we've got Flipgrid, which I'm sure a lot of you know about. Um, but Flipgrid, if you haven't seen before, essentially it's a similar idea, but you have a grid. You can record your video or you can have what's called mic only to record your, your audio. Uh, so you ask the question and then you then ask the students, then record their answers and they appear uh, on the grid um, in what's called a topic. And then so a topic is like a lesson and then you have the group and a group is like a class. Again, you can turn on moderation and there's other things you can do with Flipgrid as well. You can screen record, you can have frames, you can have uh, augmented reality. Uh, there's lots of different things. So Quicker is much, much sort of bare bones, but brilliant for what it does. And Flipgrid gives you more um, opportunities. So there's a, a Quartisol uh, webinar there, uh, which I did for the um, uh, Teachers of English as a Second Language in Queensland in Australia. And you can watch the video back there, but it starts about halfway through when I'm talking about Flipgrid. So you should find that useful as well. Uh, I see we've got some questions uh, coming in. So we could we can answer, we can do some questions now, or we can wait. Um, I don't mind. Let me know, Dawn, in the in the chat. Um, some other ways of recording audio just for say submitting for speaking homeworks are things like Vokaru, which I know a lot of you will know about. Uh, Vokaroo is fantastic because it works on all devices. You can record uh, as long as you want to. The audio is stored there for at least a year, um, if not longer, uh, if it's accessed a lot. So Vokaroo is a really nice way uh, for speaking homeworks. And then you can see underneath that, you've got SpeakPipe, which is similar, which allows you to record audio and then send it as a link to the, the teacher. You've got Record MP3 Online, which you might not be aware of. For that one, you do need to have an account, whereas you don't for the other two. Um, the students that need an account, but you as the teacher do, you then click on the audio folder. You can record your audio uh, for which you need to put it. Well, you don't have to put in an ID and a name, but it helps to um, uh, for you to identify yourself. But you don't have to put an ID and a name if you don't want to. Um, and then you then get a link. You share the link with the students and then they can then all record their audio and it all appears in the one place as in an audio folder which is really handy, I think, for speaking homeworks. And then you've got um, Padlet there, which also allows you to record audio. So you can, for example, have different um, columns in the shelf format. You can record all the questions in, say, one column and then give one column per student. They can all record their answers. Uh, if you do that, um, then it would mean if you haven't got moderation turned on, everyone can hear everyone else's audio. Whereas with the, the first few examples I mentioned, um, only the teacher would see the audio would hear the audio. And then you've got in the middle there, Voice uh, Record Pro, which works on iOS and on Android and is a really nice app for recording audio and uploading it to say Google Drive or OneDrive. 
and so on and so forth. I am going to answer all the questions. We're just going to come to those in a second. Um, another question, how can you get students to speak and put on their cameras? This is a question I'm getting all the time. Um, how can we engage students to open their cameras and speak more often instead of using the online chat? Okay, let's have a look at some of these answers. So I asked the MFL Twitterati uh, around this question, encouraging students to open their cameras. As you can see, we've got a whole range of answers here. For example, um, Senorita Taylor is saying, taking register at the beginning where you say, I'd like to hear who is present today. So do unmute yourselves and say hola or bonjour. Uh, Sarah saying, I do that. And the response is silence. Jamboard or chat is the only way my students will communicate. That's why one reason I mentioned Jamboard. Um, Emma saying, I have my register in front of me and tick off as I ask them questions. Mine know that I'll ask them so they are now prepared to come off mute and so on and so forth. I'm not going to read all of them out but you get the idea. Um, lots of uh, advice from practicing teachers. That's why I think the MFL Twitter writing community and as, as is the Langchat community in the States as well is really valuable, particularly during the, the pandemic. Thank goodness we have these communities. I think it's been one of the silver linings of the whole situation. Okay, what platforms or websites are you aware of that allow for interaction with native speakers? Now, there are lots of websites out there which allow you to interact with native speakers, but how appropriate are they for um, K-12 uh, students. So that's why I'm only going to um, put one uh, website here, which you may not be uh, aware of, which is called Billy. Um, and uh, this website is run by um, a friend of mine, um, uh, Charlie Foote. And he did a webinar for me um, a few months ago now, whereby he uh, talked about Billy and how it can be used as a way of connecting school so everyone is uh it's everything is moderated um charlie has a list of schools um that he can connect you with in different countries and it's all uh very safe and very secure if you watch the youtube clip he will go through how you do this um and uh, also he has a teacher there head of department who talks about the benefits of uh, using billy and then also towards the end we have lots of different um uh, teachers uh, also talking about the power of international collaboration so I would really encourage you to have a look at that I know there are other um, websites out there and I'm sure there are some in the states which I'm not aware of but certainly in the UK context I would recommend Billy and I think we've come to the Twitter chat check-in so Dawn if you'd like to maybe pose some of these questions to me okay. I would be delighted to answer them um so we don't have a whole lot of questions, but one question we do have from Carla, um, and she's just asking, how are the Q audios preserved? So are they downloadable? If so, what file format do they use? Um, she mentions like Vocaroo where over time, the recordings disappear. So do you have any background information on that or knowledge on yeah. how that works? Yeah, sure. So with Vokaroo, uh, you can download the, um, the the QR code from Vokaroo. Uh, as I mentioned, the link will only be valid for a year. So if you want to have it longer than that, you'd have to then download the audio. And then obviously, the QR code wouldn't be wouldn't work after a year, but you could always just recreate it, record some more audio, um, and then attach a new QR, QR code. So it depends on how you're going to use it. If you're using it just for quick audio feedback, in a way, it doesn't really matter that the audio is deleted after a year because obviously, well, I think that's quite generous. I think that SpeakPipe, for example, only lasts for three months and then it's deleted and it doesn't have a QR code option attached to it. So I think that a year is is plenty of time depending on what you're trying to do with it. Um, with Flipgrid, you um, also uh, get the option of a QR code uh, export and then with Flipgrid, they're kept there forever. So if you wanted to have... Um, uh, this, use the same idea using Flipgrid, then that would be an option if you didn't want to have any of your recordings deleted. And then with Quicker, uh, the audio obviously is also attached to a QR code, but that audio is also deleted after three months with the free model. If you want it to be there permanently, then there's a price for that. So it's probably a couple of dollars. It's a, a one pound 50. So that's probably about two or three dollars per month in order to keep the audio for as long as you want. But again, with quicker you can download the audio mm -hmm. by right clicking the the audio player for each audio and then clicking save target as and it will then download to your computer okay so there are options for for both if you want it to stay on the cloud or if you can download it 
That's exactly. Another, and in relation to the thing. format, it's probably a PNG file, I think. If you download the QR codes, I think I'm right in saying it would either be PNG or JPEG. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and I, I was just going to let everyone know too. I knew it were mentioning, I put the link in there for Billy. Um, and just I've tried to grab links as we could going through of things that you've mentioned. Um, but one that we have partnered with in the past and that also does exchanges is um, Akash Patel's Happy Foundation. And so I know that if you guys are interested in doing that kind of thing, if the time change is an issue for you or your class with doing something with um, with Billy, or if you want to find something more local, we do have a webinar about that on our YouTube channel. So we can point you in that direction if you're interested too. So, but that's all we have for right now, Joe. So I'll let you keep going because you have so many resources. <laughs> um, I want to make sure you can share as many as possible. Excellent. Thanks ever so much, Dawn. And keep the questions coming. That's fantastic. Okay. So the next um, uh, theme is around engagement uh, in a remote and blended learning environment. So let's have a look at some questions we've got here. So for example, what is your favorite engagement method for uh, online full class learning, how to engage young learners when doing online courses and how do we sustain, which is a really important point, how do we sustain student engagement um, during the uh, the pandemic or post pandemic uh, situation? Now, I'm, I'm, I don't know if you know Blookit, I know it's becoming more and more uh, known about, but certainly amongst the MFL Twitterati, it's proving a real hit, I would say, since it came out. Uh, it's similar to other types of um, uh, online uh, formative assessment tools such as um, quizzes and Quizlet and, and so on and so forth. But what's nice about Blookit, it's very much a, a gamified way of learning. It's, it's um, multiple choice, but you have a number of different activity types. I would say, based on my uh, reflections and observations through what uh, people in the MFL Twitter article have been tweeting about, that the, um, uh, the Gold Quest is probably the most popular one. And you, um, you hear people tweeting about saying, um, that uh, such and such a student was delighted that they had stolen the gold from the teacher and so on and so forth. So it's a little bit like uh, it's a gamified approach, a little bit like GimKit as well, for those people that know that one. Um, and a really nice shortcut as well is the fact that you can import your Quizlet sets from Quizlet straight into uh, Blookit, which um, saves a lot of time. So it's blookit.com. And um, as you can see on the screen there, it looks uh, very uh, inviting as well. Here are some of the features. Um, that I've written down in relation to Blookit. Um, so it doesn't require the students to have um, an account. They just need to be able to click on the link as with other tools such as quizzes and so on and so forth. Uh, it's competitive and fun. It allows for the Quizlet import that I talked about. You've got a range of different uh, activities. As I said, I think Gold Quest seems to be the most popular uh, one at the moment. Feel free to put in the chat if you find that other uh, game types are, are um, more popular. And there, there is a premium version, but it would seem that you don't really need to have the premium version. Um, if you don't want to, you can make as many. I think I'm right in saying you can make as many games as you want to. It just means it, that it gives you the option to create folders in the premium version as well. And it's got live and asynchronous modes, which is true of lots of the other uh, tools that I mentioned already. And one nice thing about the pandemic, I think, is the way in which companies have responded to the need for asynchronous learning and homework uh, opportunities in addition to live lessons as well. So lots of these um, developers have actually introduced these sorts of things um, during the pandemic because of the demand. Uh, there was a Tilt webinar uh, which took place in January of this year, um, which is a show and tell webinar um, format. In other words, there were four teachers um, spending about 20 minutes each showcasing a particular tool. So back in January, we did uh, one on Blookit. And if you were to watch that video, then you'd be able to see um, all the tips and tricks that the teacher suggests. And also we all had a go at uh, playing it live as well, which is a lot of fun. So um, there we are. There were two um, separate show and tells uh, almost straight away after we went into the the uh, the lockdown in January. I think it was literally after a couple of days. So we did uh, part one and part two. This one is in part two. OK. Uh, Wordwall is another um, tool which I know has been uh, popular during the, the pandemic. Uh, Russell Stannard, I don't know if you know Russell, but Russell is um, an ELT uh, educational consultant and he does lots of webinars as, as well as I do. And he has said that um, the feedback he's getting about Wordwall is it's one of the most popular tools at the moment. So uh, 
Uh, Word Wall gives you access to many, many different activity types. There are some restrictions in what you can do with the free version, which I'm uh, going to talk about in a moment. Um, here are some of the activity types that you can do. So you can see how they lend themselves really nicely to language learning. You've got things like random wheel, uh, matching up, unjumbling, um, game show quiz, and so on and so forth. Um, so there's lots of things there that you can use, different templates. With the free version, though, you only get you only are able to create five different um, templates. Um, and out of those templates that you choose, you can make as many activities as you want to. There's also the community section as well, which allows you to uh, edit different activities there. And you get access to 18 different activity types, but you have to choose five out of those for free. Um, so here's, again, the information around, uh, around WordWall. Again, low prep, visually appealing, easy to use. Um, create You create 18 types of games with a free version and 34 with a paid version. The paid version is not a lot. It's only about, uh, it would be the equivalent of about $10 a month um, for unlimited uh, numbers of uh, activities and games, etc. There's live and asynchronous modes um, and so on and so forth. So, oh, there's also principal activities as well, which is really nice, um, which uh, would mean, say, for example, if you had students at home that didn't have access to a good internet connection, you could always send home principal versions of the activities. Um, again, here are a couple of uh, Tilt webinars. The one on the left-hand side uh, is by um, uh, Glenn Cake, uh, great surname, uh, G-L-E-N-N -N space cake, as in gâteau. And uh, Glenn is a Canadian uh, teacher who's been doing distance learning for many, many years. And he did a webinar for us whereby he showcased WordWall. And then we've got Ellie Chettle Cully, who's a primary practitioner from the UK, who also did a tilt webinar for us and showed us some different tools, including WordWall and how she uses it. So um, as you can see, we've done lots and lots of tilt webinars and they're all really, really useful, I think. And I'd encourage you to check them out. Here are some suggestions on motivation, which I've put together. Uh, feel free to disagree with any of these, but uh, again, I'm not gonna read them all out. This was crowdsourced uh, by me and the, uh, the MFL Twitterati. Uh, essentially, I said, can you suggest strategies which um, are good for maintaining motivation? Because that is one of the key uh, features, I think, in on this, all this online learning. And this is what the MFL Twitterati said. So they, they're mentioning here some of the tools I've talked about already. Uh, for, for recording audio, for screencasting, and so on and so forth, having uh, competitions and fun tasks, uh, using things like WordWall and Genially, all the things that we know about already, but hopefully this will be a, a, a nice reminder on all the things that one can do to uh, sustain motivation in this, uh, in this very challenging time. There we are. Okay, now what we're going to have a look at is uh, around planning in a remote and blended learning environment. OK, and some questions around that. So how do you successfully plan for a blended learning environment? Well, so nice, and e nice and easy question uh, here. So uh, here are some suggestions um, for those people who are using uh, Google tools, in particular Google Classroom. Um, I would recommend uh, checking out this Tilt webinar from Samantha Broom, who's the head of languages uh, in a school in Blackburn in the northwest of England. And uh, she's also a lovely person, which is the most important thing. And um, uh, Samantha did a really definitive uh, tilt webinar for us all around Google Classroom. She also has a, um, a, a Facebook group, which has, I think, about 3,000 members now, which is called um, uh, Google Classroom for MFL Teachers, which you can check out. And um, there are lots of people there all talking about Google tools. But this is Samantha essentially going through step by step on different ways in which you can set up your Google Classroom. So if you're using Google Classroom, I'd really encourage you to have a look at that particular um, webinar. And then on the right hand side, we had a Google workshop um, a few months later, whereby we encourage people to ask lots and lots of questions. And then we had Samantha and also Darren White, who's known as Ranga the Trainer on Twitter, essentially trying to answer as many questions as possible during the time. And that was really, really, really well received which is great to see. Um, similarly, with uh, people in a Microsoft environment, on the left-hand side there, these are uh, links all to Tilt webinars around different ways of using uh, Microsoft tools or Office 365. So for example, how to set up uh, the calendar, how to use um, uh, the, um, uh, the Meet Now option in Teams, how to use uh, Microsoft Forms, how to use Microsoft Stream for recording the screen and this sort of thing. 
So you've got all the different uh, Tilt webinars listed there. And then you've also got all the workshops as well. So where we encourage people to ask questions as well as um, just um, uh, the presenter presenting about content. We didn't, we didn't want to just repeat the same thing. So we're encouraging uh, any teachers that wanted to come along to ask questions about why is it when I do this, this happens, et cetera, that, those sorts of things. So you've got two tweets there, which link to all different Tilt webinars around Microsoft. This is a slide which is showcasing some of the, um, the teachers that have talked about a hybrid approach to teaching. So you've got Dr. Catherine Ritz um, from Boston University, Meredith White, um, who, who you all know, I'm sure, um, talking about hybrid context using tools such as Formative and um, Google Slides in the grid view, uh, uh, view so you can see what everyone's doing at the same time. Uh, Dr. Felix Cronenberg, also from the States, talking about the, the new book, uh, the new normal and rethinking uh, hybrid course design. Sophia Mavridi, who is a lecturer at Leicester de Montfort University and is an international keynote speaker, and she very kindly did a, a tilt webinar for us, and Echemena, who I mentioned already. So lots of different ideas from practicing teachers, as well as people working at university level, on how we plan uh, a hybrid context, which you, again you should find useful. Um, when I was planning for a webinar a few months ago, I was uh, particularly looking at hybrid teaching and um, through a Twitter search, I was uh, uh, very pleasantly surprised to come across a lady called Beth K. Alexander from Canada, from the Linden School, and she's put together these different models, which are you know very, very um, pretty and useful, I think, from the point of view of describing different roles, that different people with it involved in um, uh, hybrid teaching can have like what the teacher is doing what the student in class is doing what the student at home is doing etc so um, Beth has created a number of different models and they're all available via the uh, Google Drive link which I put um, on that slide and then Sophia Mavridi along with other stakeholders uh, from around the world uh, put together this report as well I think in autumn of last year um, around the hybrid classroom so again you should find that very useful as well um, to uh, have a look at and to to think about uh, how you would want to possibly change or adapt what you're doing. This is a blog post by Esmeralda Salgado um, about blended learning. As I said, uh, Esmeralda is done is doing this fantastic blog at the moment, very practical. So she's working in the Microsoft environment, but she's mentioning some some third party tools there, some of which I'm sure you know, and how it all fits together, and how she's focusing on the pedagogy and not on the technology which is uh, obviously always very, very, very important. Um, there was also this um, webinar, which I helped to organize along with uh, Dr. Paul Spence and Dr. Naomi Wells um, from um, different uh, universities in London. Um, and this was an open world research initiative. That's where the funding came from. And it was a panel of secondary school uh, specialists, language teachers talking about uh, reflecting on the on the pandemic and things that have changed and the blended approach and, and so on and so forth. I think that's about an hour and a half that video. So again, if you want to have a look at that, um, I'm sure you'd find it interesting, particularly from what's happening in the UK, if you're not uh, aware. Next question, do you have any good suggestions for group tasks for online learning? Okay, so let's have a look at some answers here. So group work, um, all the all the uh, the video conferencing tools, the popular ones such as uh, Google Meet, Zoom, and Microsoft Teams, all allow for breakout rooms. That wasn't the case at the start of the pandemic. It was only Zoom that, where you could do that, and then um, uh, uh, Google and Microsoft then added that functionality. Uh, on this particular page, you've got a YouTube clip by Mike Tolson, who works for Microsoft in the education department, who's prolific on creating videos around Microsoft tools. And there's a really nice um, video there describing how you can use breakout rooms in, in Teams. And then on the right-hand side, you've got some other advice on uh, using breakout rooms in Teams as well. So again, I've got the links there for you to have a look at. Okay, uh, then here we've got another Tilt webinar. Uh, this is from Esther Baran, who works as a lecturer at Cardiff University in the, in, in the south of Wales. And she did a, um, a, a section within the second uh, show and tell tilt webinar back in January. And that's just a screenshot from one of her uh, slides within that presentation. So there's some really nice ideas there about using breakout rooms in, um, in a language learning context. Here uh, is another blog post um, on the Freed website around some ideas around speaking, which I'd encourage you to have a look at. Uh, this is by Phil Longwell. 
uh, on the right hand side who I've known for many years, who I know from um, uh, uh, teaching English as a foreign language context. And he did a, a webinar for the TELSIG conference around using breakout rooms, um, which is fantastic to see. And then the next one, this is um, a Greg Kulowick, who I'm a big fan of. He uh, coined the expression app smashing back in 2013. And he's got a wonderful video there about how you can connect different Google Slides presentations all together as a master presentation and then see what other um, small groups are, are doing. In other words, they all have their own presentation, um, but you can see what everyone's doing in the master slide. So do check out that video. He's, he's amazing. And his YouTube channel has lots of similar, fantastically creative um, video tutorials. Okay. Russell Stannard, who I've mentioned already, uh, he has done a number of different breakout room videos. He's actually got some more now um, uh, because recently Zoom made it possible to share your uh, screens in breakout rooms, whereas, whereas that wasn't possible before. So there are some, some videos on how you can use breakout rooms. Um, and as I said, he has an ELT background, so he has a languages background. He's suggested different ways in which it can be used to enhance language learning as well. Right, next question. While teaching a physical class, some students are online hooking into the lesson with Teams. How does one write on a whiteboard that has no electronic connection to anything and accept students at home online to follow the lesson? Right, so there's some, some creative responses to this one. Uh, so here on the left-hand side, this is a, a little tutorial which um, a teacher came up with whereby they had the, uh, the webcam or the visualizer pointing down at the, um, uh, at the, the table and then the teacher is then writing on a mini whiteboard, but um, showing it through uh, Microsoft Teams. The same thing, you could do the same thing with Zoom and with Google Meet as well. And then on the right-hand side, you've got um, the idea of using a second device, like a phone, propping it up, um, let's say between a couple of cans, if you wanted to, pointing it so the camera points downwards, and then writing on the exercise book, but then sharing it with um, the same Teams meeting on the laptop. So if you then have that laptop connected to a projector, it means you can then model and uh, use it as a, as a visualizer. The important thing to remember is that you mute the audio um, on the second device, otherwise you'll get feedback or you'll get an echo, should I say. So that's uh, another idea there. Uh, on this one, this is a nice little tip whereby you can create a type of document camera. Um, you can uh, go for like a plastic one from IPVO, or you can use a compact um, case with a mirror on it, and you can tie it to your laptop um, um, screen with an elastic band, as it were, and then just point the mirror uh, at an angle so that the webcam is basically looking downwards, reflected from the mirror. Um, on the left-hand side, you've got Ranga the trainer there, Darren White, if I mentioned already, and he's showing how to make the same sort of thing, but using cardboard completely for free. Um, so a nice way of being able to um, use your uh, webcam as a visualizer in the uh, in the classroom. So if you watch those videos, you'll get some other ideas. Right, Twitter chat. Do we have any other questions in the uh, in the chat, Dawn? I think right now a lot of the questions are um, more so that people are like, "Are we going to be able to have access to all of this?" So several yes, of you, you have sent me yes, direct messages. Um, I just want to make sure you all know that you will have access to the whole slide deck. Um, and I think, Joe, what we may do is we may just create a wakelet around this webinar and just put all these links and resources in that wakelet and share it out with all of you who were um, here tonight so that you it'll be easy access then. You'll have the slide deck also. And so you'll be able to actually see the slide listen to Joe talk about what it is and explore the links as well. So you're gonna have everything. It is truly a gold find. So thank you for sharing thank so you. many resources. My pleasure, Let, let's carry on. We've still got 10 minutes, let's keep going. Uh, so next one, feedback in a remote and blended learning environment. Feedback obviously is a pillar of, of a, a language teacher's repertoire or with any teacher. Let's have a look at some options here. So how is feedback useful in planning new lessons? That was a question that I had in. Any suggestions for 365 products? We use OneNote. Thank you. There we are. Okay, so these are genuine questions. I've not made them up uh, from practicing teachers. Okay, so I made a list of different tools which offer feedback opportunities. As you can see, they're all there. I'm not going to go through each one individually, um, but um, I'm sure you know a lot of these already. When I say praise postcards, the idea is that you create a, a template as a praise postcard. You can then record some audio using, say, Quicker or Vokaroo. You put the QR code on the praise postcard. 
uh, giving praise to a piece of work, and then you then download that as an image or as a PDF and share it with the students. So I think that they, the fact they can listen to your voice as a uh, as a student, I think would be very powerful during the pandemic, when I'm sure everyone's feeling uh, some anxiety and so on and so forth. And then Mote, M-O-T-E, if you're not aware of that one, that's a Chrome extension, um, which allows you to record audio as comments um, in Google Docs, Google Slides and Google Classroom. But you can also record um, using what's called the Mote pad, uh, copy the link to the clipboard automatically and then post it wherever you want to post it. So that's also really, really useful for feedback as well. Uh, here's some blog posts. Um, we've got um, Esmeralda, uh, her blog on the left hand side, and James on the right hand side around other suggestions on feedback, which is why I've, I've put that there for you. Uh, another um, idea which has proved very popular amongst the MFL Twitterati is to do a live writing uh, activity with either a collaborative online PowerPoint, or you can do the same thing with uh, Google Slides in Grid View. So basically you can see what everyone's doing on their own individual slides. So you assign one slide per student. And if a student has moved to another slide because they're, they're cheating or they're helping a, a friend, then visually you can see very quickly because the icon will be uh, in the corner of uh, each slide. So you'll be able to see if there are two icons next to each other, for example. So that's a screenshot there of a, um, a PowerPoint example. You've got a, um, a video clip there, a tutorial on how to do this, which was created by uh, a languages teacher, head of languages called Joe Pickering uh, from the UK, which um, you can have a look at. And also I've got a Loom link there for Jane Bassner, who's also done this tutorial on this as well to uh, help you set it up. Uh, this was created by a, a languages teacher, Kaylee Merrick, a few years ago now called Live Writing. Uh, again, you could do the same thing in the class notebook, but essentially she's suggesting that in Google Docs that you use um, this, uh, this sort of table whereby you've got the name here, response, written feedback, audio feedback. So you'd ask the students to then write in their name, write in their, say, paragraph in the target language. You then give them written feedback or audio feedback using Moat if you wanted to or Vokaroo. And so you're giving them feedback live. And as a result of the feedback you're giving them live, they're then changing their, uh, their response live. So that's why it's called live writing. And you can read more about it here. But I think that's a really nice idea. And that would work equally well in um, uh, Class Notebook. This is another idea. This is um, Rebecca Jones, uh, who is using the extended clipboard, which allows you to have up to 25 items in your clipboard. So if you copy and paste the different comments that you make when marking a piece of work. You can then have them all in your clipboard. And if you uh, click on the three dots uh, on the right hand side and you click pin, it means when you restart your computer, the clipboard won't be wiped. And so as a result of that, if you're marking a piece of work like a PowerPoint, et cetera, you can literally just copy and paste um, the, the comments that you're making multiple times into, um, into your PowerPoint, into a Word document, whatever you want. So that's the extended clipboard works really nicely in uh, in windows and it just you know gives some advice there about how you enable the clipboard history etc hello assessment authenticity in a remote and blended learning environment okay so we've got a couple more minutes uh what are the most effective ways to get students uh to write without using google translate how do you assess students fairly in a remote learning environment again a big issue around summative assessment okay so this was um, a webinar that Esmeralda Salgado did for Language Nut um, quite recently. As you see, it's called MFL SOS Practical Tips for Blended Learning with Guest Esmeralda Salgado. So see, these are some of the um, tips that she's put together to encourage students not to use Google Translate. Um, one of the options is use snipping tool to convert a translation text into an image. That's a really nice idea. Uh, the snipping tool, the new version of snipping tool is called Snip and Sketch, which is um, awesome. My favorite one is... Um, uh, add signal words in white text in a tiny font to a translation text. So in other words, what you do is you put in a signal word like, I don't know, submarine or marshmallow, or whatever, whatever it might be, but you make it very, very small and you change the color of the font, um, uh, the color, yeah, the color of the, the text. So it's um, the same as the background color, which means if the students put it through Google Translate and you see the word marshmallow or submarine, what have you, then it's very uh, easy to recognize the fact that they have used Google Translate. And there's some other ideas there. Um, as well. So that was Vincent Everett, who is a, a stalwart on the American Twitterati, who came up with that idea. Uh, here's some other ideas as well about discouraging the use of um, Google Translate. So for example, um, this is Francois Stolder, um, my friend who works in uh, Hungary at the American International School of um, Budapest. And what he does is he gets the students to write on paper and point the webcam at their hands while, he's, uh, while they're doing a test. 
is that they then use a tool such as Microsoft Lens to turn their uh, bits of paper into a PDF and upload them to uh, OneDrive or wherever you want to upload them to. And then on the left-hand side, there's some suggestions here from some other languages uh, teachers about how you can use uh, Microsoft Lens to or the OneDrive app, which works in the same way, to uh, turn any bits of paper into a PDF and upload them to the cloud. And then also in a Google environment in Google Docs, you've got DraftBack and DocuViz, which allow you to go through the history of a document and then visually see there's been a large um, chunk of text which has been copied in um, from, say, Google Translate. You can visually see that very, very quickly. So that's another tip for you as well. Okay, running out of time, but teaching ideas in a remote and blended learning environment for primary learners. Okay, so uh, how do you teach primary students remotely? So a great question. Again, um, as part of the funding from um, the Open World Research Initiative, in addition to the secondary school uh, session that we did um, earlier, a few months earlier, we did um, two webinars uh, sharing primary practice, both of which are about an hour and a half long, um, including uh, primary practitioners showing what they did during the lockdown, uh, during the pandemic. And I would really encourage you to have a look at those. And even if you're not a primary teacher, I'm sure you would um, gain a lot from that uh, experience. They're really lovely. They're very touching as well, the sense that there's a teacher there who's was reluctant on using technology, but she gave it a go. She had to because of the pandemic and she, um, did it very very successfully it was really really lovely to see Hello, I'm Paul Spencer. okay twitter chat check in i think we're more or less at the end are there any questions uh dawn at all for me to cover right now we did not have any more questions come in I, I just again people wanted to make sure they can access everything yeah. i think it was um there was so much to take <laughs> in and i think now people just need to soak in yeah explore so many links to explore um if you guys have any questions please don't hesitate though to use twitter and hashtag oh okay carla has a quick question. question go ahead carla you want to throw your question in the chat um and while we're here you can put your question in the chat if you come up with a question or you have a comment or something that you would like to share with joe after the webinar make sure you use the hashtag ask joe dale you can tweet it to him or you can post it to our um, Avant More Learning Facebook group. The link is in the chat for you there too. Okay, Carla asks, we have some students who have anxiety and refuse to do in-person oral assessments. What advice and ideas do you have for her, Joe? Yeah, that's, that's, that's hard, isn't it? I mean, that's really down to the relationship, isn't it? It's, it's about encouraging uh, the, the student to um, uh, to record themselves um, if they if they have anxiety, which I'm sure lots of people are suffering from at the moment. Um, I think it's all about encouraging them gently, uh, being kind um, to to um, to the students. Well, obviously to all students, but I think maybe asking them to record something independently so no one else is around, uh, that sort of thing. Maybe giving them some sort of reward, maybe um, or encouragement that way. But really, to me, that's all about, you know, those soft skills and just encouraging them to, to give things a go. Um, and, and obviously, speaking is part of language learning. It's a very important part and to and just really encourage them as much as possible. But I think in general, it's very important at the moment. Everyone's going through their own different contexts of just to be kind and teachers are brilliant at doing that anyway. But just to be kind and to always be encouraging and to... Uh, uh, to see, you know, what that will, uh, what that will um, uh, produce as a result. So that's why I would suggest just be kind and, and encourage as much as possible um, uh, for this that particular student to uh, to give it a go. And you know, what's the worst that can happen? You know, if they're on their own recording it, no one else is going to be there. They'll be okay. You know, it'll be it'll be okay. They'll be all right. <laughs> Yeah, I think actually during the pandemic, some some students who do have that kind of anxiety face to face, it was a relief for them to have the option to record things. Yeah. Um, and it's it's a way to kind of address some of that anxiety even after you're face to face. Right. Definitely. Um, I do have a few things I want to remind people about um, before they go. And before we say anything else, I just want to thank you so much, Joe, for putting together just this huge as one of our viewers said, pot of gold that you've shared with us. Um, so many resources and so much time and so much dedication and what you've contributed to our profession um, always, but through this pandemic, especially as things turned into an area that was your specialty, 
um, you really have been there for teachers. And so thank you for that, for your, for your thank dedication you. and your, your sacrifice of time and everything that you've done. We really appreciate it. Thank you. I really, I really appreciate you saying that, Dawn. And obviously, I mean, all the Tilt webinars, for example, I've done all completely for free just because morally it felt the right thing to do. And I, I love you know, supporting teachers from around the world. I really wanted to, um, uh, to try and uh, speak at as many conferences as possible in the States. Having this opportunity today has been amazing. And uh, my, my door, my virtual door is always open. You can always ask me questions on Twitter or, or, or email. I've given you all my contact details. So, you know, don't don't be a stranger. Get in touch if you want to ask me any more questions around any of these sorts of ideas. I'm here to help and I want to help. And um, and I know there's lots of amazing people in the States as well who um, who likewise want to help as well. And isn't it great that we have these existing communities? I know I've said this already, but I think it's so it's so you know relevant. The fact that we have these communities already, like the MFL Twitter, Arty, like the Langchat community. And so people can come together and have been coming together supporting each other and thank goodness for that i think it's been a real silver lining definitely but Absolutely. thank you so much for all the lovely comments and, and your comment just then dawn i really really appreciate it thank you oh we're just so glad and it's it's so nice with technology to be able to have this this time together despite the distance um and to be able to have everyone join together and learn together so Thank you for your time and for staying up so late. You guys, it's really late for Joe. It's almost yeah, I need to get to bed. I'm glad that my little boy <laughs> hasn't been woken up um, so far. It's all good. Cool. Do we have another couple of slides? Do you want to, to take control I do. of the mouse? Oh, maybe? there we go. I wasn't sure if I had control. Yes. So just for you guys who are watching, want to just let you know, um, when you when I end the webinar, a, a window will pop up for you where you can complete a survey. And actually, I can put that link in the chat for you. Um, if you want to go ahead and start, this will give um, it will give us some information about what you learned and what you enjoyed. It will also give Joe some feedback about um, things that you found helpful and that you liked. Um, and we want to also let you know at the end of that um, survey, a window will pop up for you and um, you guys will be able to access materials. You'll be able to get a certificate for your attendance tonight if you need that for verification for PDUs or credits or whatever it may be. Um, but you'll also get an email tomorrow. So if you if you miss it tonight or it's late and you can't do anything with it tonight, you'll get an email tomorrow that will have all of the same information for you. So don't worry. Um, and also just know you, as Joe said, you can ask him questions after the fact. Please use the hashtag AskJoDale. And um, I think those are all the reminders that I have for you. Joe, thank you again so, so, so very much. I hope you're able to get some rest. I think you did remarkably well considering you're up during the middle of the night to do this with us. So we appreciate it so much. Thank you. It's my absolute pleasure. Thank you ever so much, Dawn, for being a fantastic host. And thank you ever so much, everybody, for coming along and uh, for taking part in the, the webinar. And everyone watched the recording. Uh, thank you ever so much for watching the recording. And let's stay in touch. Ask me any questions that, that you'd like to using the hashtag Ask Joe Dale. It'd be my absolute Absolutely. pleasure. Yes. And it, like you said, it will be recorded. So if you guys want to share this or watch it later, you'll have access to that too. Well, that's all we have for tonight. Um, we will see you again. We'll be having more events in the coming months. Um, we will be having another Insightful Learning in October, and we have another webinar coming up with Kristen Davenport again um, for like part two of the Flank webinar um, in November. So be looking out for that. It's coming up soon. Um, and with that, we're going to sign off. So thank you, Joe. Have a great evening. Nice night, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs> Let's try this again. <laughs>